Welcome to another edition of Bob's the Name, Tennis and Pickleball's My Games. Okay, we're off site today, as you can see in the background. We're over at the Sterling YMCA on Essex Street, and we're going to do a session on the fastest growing sport in the United States, pickleball. Okay, with me today, I have at my, my far right, Tim Flattery, who is the new executive director of the Beverly YMCA. And most of you know him as one of the city councilors for years. Uh, next to Tim is um, Garrett Kohler, and he's representing the Marblehead YMCA. And right next to me is <coughs> Sue Carnavale, who is responsible for all of this in a way because she started pickleball in Beverly 10 years ago. So I'm uh, going to have Sue started off uh, by talking about um, where did pickleball come from? Where is it going? Sue, uh, sure, where did you. it start? Pickleball started in 1965 in Washington State. Um, it started in um, Bainbridge um, at, a, at a family home, a summer home. I guess the family was bored or the kids were bored and uh, they put together this great sport in their yard. And then off to Florida it went. Um, well, yep, I can give you a little bit more history. So, so no more history, yes. So, <laughs> it, um, yep, it, it kind of graduated and moved uh, eastward and um, was, uh, became really popular in the villages in Florida. Um, and from there, ambassadors like myself, um, going down there, traveling, learning about pickleball, brought it around. So um, I, what, my story? Yeah, you, sure. You and my, uh, Marty. Marty, yes. So I went to visit my good friend Marty Goldberg in the villages, and I was hooked on the sport. So I came back, and when she came back, we, um, we, we got a little bit of spray paint, shall I say, and we started painting the lines in my driveway. And How did your husband Oh, react yeah, he was really, that? really thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't happy. It wasn't a good day. Now, I understand there was talk about separation, but because Sue's real job is a psychologist, uh, everything was uh, put back together. <laughs> yeah, I manipulated him a little bit so right. that, you know, he eventually fell in love with this sport. So Yeah, uh, he plays. He plays, yeah. yeah. He plays. He's actually the lead referee for Massachusetts. Okay. Um, so. It, let me just say one thing. Sure. The history of pickleball is in this fine book. I'm sorry, I should history, show you. History of pick pickleball. History of yep. pickleball. History of pickleball. More than 50 years. By? Um, Jennifer LaCour and Beverly Youngbren. Great. Marblehead. What's going on in Marblehead? So not only in Marblehead, but across all of our locations at the YMCA of the North Shore, we're trying to reinvigorate the pickleball community. It's been, like Sue said, it's been going on for about 10 years at various capacities across our different locations and now um, we look like we're ready to really up our game and get more open pickleball times for people um, as well as provide some private lessons down the road and hopefully some more competitive play as well as we move forward. So how many courts do you have? So that depends on each location. I think across the association uh, we've probably got about 15 different courts. Um, if you have a membership here with us you could go to any of those locations oh, and, and play at any of those great. times and then we offer somewhere between, I mean, it depends on which location, but about 12 to 15 hours a day of pickleball that you can go and play. Mostly uh, indoors? All indoors right now. Okay. Uh, as we move into the summer months, we are looking to put at least two or three outdoor courts, uh, courts at each location, um, and hopefully a few more at some of the locations that have more parking lot space. Fantastic. Yep. Now, right now, what would you say uh, percent-wise, um, young people, middle-aged, or seniors are your main population? A majority of the players we have are probably over 50 right now. Okay. Um, but we are looking to get the younger community more involved in pickleball and hopefully some of those group lessons. And then we have uh, a couple locations, Marblehead, I believe Beverly has one as well, that's a Sunday morning family time. 
and that's encouraging folks to bring their grandkids, bring their kids, bring their teenage kids that want to come in and play pickleball and just try it out. Um, we don't care so much about the who's advanced, who's beginners on those days, really just kind of a, a community event where everyone can come and play pickleball and hopefully grasp some of that younger community. Right. That and there's also a get. very big program at Gordon College. Yes. Okay, so it's not just YMCA's that are involved. Um, you know, there are other uh, venues where pickleball can, can, be, can be played. Yep. Um, I'll give you also Hamilton Wenham has a pretty big program going there as well. The Parks and Recreation? Yes. Okay. Yep. That's interesting because Sue has been trying forever uh, to get the city of Beverly more involved. Uh, right now, it's at Ober Park. Yes. And, uh, but we're looking to expand uh, quite, quite a bit uh, from, from there. But that, that, that's a story for another day. So Tim, uh, what, you're, you're one of the big pushers of pickleball right here. Absolutely, yes. It's just trying to meet a community need. Um, and I've known Sue for, for so long, um, had a great relationship with her. I know she does a great job. So the idea of, of collaborating what we do with so many other people in the community to meet the community need um, it's exciting because the good thing is, uh, like Ken Garrett had mentioned, you know, everybody can play. You can have kids play, uh, young adults and seniors all in the same game. So it could be a nice, it could be a great family event. Yeah, Beverly's fortunate to have Sue and her committee uh, so knowledgeable and they can teach lessons, uh, run tournaments, this, that, whatever. But the city of Beverly uh, puts very, uh, very few resources into uh, the recreation uh, area. But like I said, that, that's a story for another day. Right, but the good thing is, too, um, you know, the, talking about the Beverly Y, the Beverly Regional Y, because, you know, it's Hamilton, Wedham, and Manchester is our service area. Um, but we have people coming from Peabody, Danvers, to come over here to play uh, at the Beverly Y. And the good thing is what we're looking at, Ken Garrett had mentioned, is doing something out in our parking lot. So if you have a nice spring day, instead of being inside, you can go outside and use our pickleball courts. Right, so pickleball is coming to... Right here on Essex Street, the YMCA, in the spring. Outside. It's already Outside, here. Outside, weather permitting. <clears throat> okay, so does anybody have anything else they'd like to add? No, we're just excited to, you know, be here. And I know we've done this before in the past, but to have it well organized and to have lessons, um, having more people involved. Um, because, I, you know, Sue, probably you could tell it more than I can, but the idea of where pickleball has gone from today, where it was even a couple of years ago, um, is, is a, especially during COVID and the struggles we've gone through, the idea of actually coming into the spring and going out into outdoors and even being inside is exciting because our members are really looking forward to it, um, to have this pickleball kind of right. really take off. Now, after this little chat, we're going to be going into the gym and actually observing pickleball being played, and Sue will do the commentary. Uh, so you'll learn a little bit about what's going on, can I play, can I not play. If you're a senior and you can walk and you have some balance and your doctor says, sure, it's for you. It's not like tennis where you tried tennis and gave it up because it was too hard. It is not hard. It is easy. Okay, uh, thanks for this segment. Uh, we're going uh, into the gym now to uh, observe some pickleball. Welcome again to the YMCA. We're now in the main gym and you can see pickleball is going on. All right, so Three courts are set up. On a, outside, on a basic tennis court, you can actually put in four pickleball courts. Okay? They go in the opposite direction uh, of a tennis court. All right, so anyway, we're inside. We have different levels being uh, played out here. And I'm going to turn over to Sue to make comments on what she's seeing and I want you to particularly pay attention to be able to answer the question 
is this for me? Is this something I can do and have fun at? Okay, so Sue, take over. Okay, so no, stay, yeah. stay, stay, stay so say we're, we're watching this first first game here. They're serving on these on the far side. They're serving. The man in the dark shirt will be serving to this guy. He they should. All right. So they should have moved up to the um, no volley zone. Um, we have to watch for footfalls, which means, do you see that front area where the blue line is? Can you can you can you see that? You can't step in that area unless the ball bounces. A anyway. Um, so. so with the blue line up close to the net is called the kitchen. And you can only go in the kitchen at certain times. Well, if the ball bounces, you can step in, hit the ball, step out. Other than that, see, he has to stand behind He's the standing. kitchen. Yeah. Well. Now, when you serve, the ball has to bounce. We have this. And you only get one serve. So you have to serve it cross court and outside of the kitchen. So right. the best serve is a deep serve. Yeah. So Anne over there is, is serving it diagonally, cross court. Um, it has to bounce once on this side. The returners need to send it back. It has to bounce once on the other side. So you, if you're just served, you don't want to start running in because you get caught in like no person's land and you won't be able to let the ball bounce. Well, we have another game starting in a minute or two. They're just reorganizing. All right, let's so watch we, the next one. We can ex explore it a little bit. Okay, so now it looks like we're monitoring the court uh, in the middle there. The woman in orange is serving it deep. This woman returns it, but she should have run up to the no volley zone because most of this game is played up at the net. It's, it's a game of finesse, and yes, you, you have a little bit of slamming on a high ball, but it should really be a deep serve, a deep return, and then we do what's called the ding shot. Let me grab that ball for them. So again, you do a deep serve, a deep return, and then we do what's called the dink. So she serves it deep, she should return it deep, and move up. She would make it much easier on herself if she moved up to the, to the non-volley line. It's hard to see here with an angle, but... All right. The kitchen, call it the yeah, kitchen. kitchen, no, well, I have to say no volley zone. Kitchen or no volley zone. And we say, we don't say kitchen a lot because we don't know what that really meant. Uh, back with the founders of of pickleball. So it's really the no volley zone. Anyway. All right, so we have Kim here. Kim is serving. She'll do a deep serve. He will do a deep return. That was good. It landed on the line. If that was out, it would have been her point. Okay, so now the serve is going over to the other side. Now he will serve it here to Kim. Her partner is up at the line. His paddle should be up in the ready position. Kim moves up, beautiful. All the way up, Kim. Make it easy on yourself, stay up at the line. Nice job. Now the oh, idea is when the people are up at the net, they want to return the ball low until they get a ball that's above the level of the net, and then they try yep. to put it away. So there's a lot of little thinking going on back and forth uh, until the ball gets high. So he should be all, he should move his way all the way up. Right up, right up, yep. Oh, almost, good try. Now you, 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 talk, you spoke about, you know, can I play this sport? Well, Kim just came off of some major back uh, issues, some surgery. And here she is, a month and a half later, playing pickleball. 
Move up, Cam. Sometimes a player will play back a little bit because the person they're playing lobs a lot, throws the ball up in the air deep. And well, also too, Bob. Sometimes they're a little afraid to be up at the up at the no volley line. Right. But it's it's if really. If they're playing a, a power hitter like this gentleman here, what's his name? Yeah. I'm spacing out on his name right now. Uh, anyway, he is a power player, and you don't want to be too close. Well. To, uh, to the to the to the net. Usually. On the other hand, if I'm up at the net and I have a power play, I'm just going to block that ball and let the his energy yeah, right. take the ball back. That depends on your level. Right, right, you're right. Now we have different levels out here. Would you, would you care to comment on like this this first court here? What level would you call this? Okay, well this is it's definitely a mixed level court. Okay. Um. We can tell by where they stand on the on the on receiving a ball, sending a ball, and where they keep their paddle. So everybody's rated just like tennis. Well, you don't have to be rated. You really don't. Um, well, that's how you get your matchups. Well, no, this is just a this is just a drop in uh, right here. They're working the Y here is working on a leveling system for their more competitive play. Right. So they'll be doing inner inner uh, league so tournaments. The, the levels are the same as tennis, like a three zero, yes. three five. Yes, yes, yeah. And the more skill you have, the there you go. Move up, Kim. That was great. That was a nice hit he did. So will will this rating be self done, or will it be done by an instructor? Well, you know. You can self-rate yourself based on USA Pickleball, say, has um, a rating, rating system you can look at online. And it's about skill level, but the Y will also be doing a rating system um, down the line. So more sophisticated pickleball, you would see a deep serve, a deep return, and then everyone would be right up at the line. After the third hit, all four players should be in. Well, I'll tell you something. If I'm a returner, after my second, after my hit, as a returner, I am up there. I have my partner up there, up at that line, because that's where you okay. want to play this game. And then the serving side has to kind of earn their way up. If it's a deep shot coming back to them, though, they're, they're stuck. They have to let the ball bounce. Exactly. And so you learn what's called a third shot drop. To put it into the no volley zone, not a high ball that you're gonna get slammed at, so that you can move, so that the team can move their way up there. And it, you know, it might seem a little complicated right here. It, if we had, you know, people doing what they should naturally do, say, in a, you know, in a higher level game, you would be able to kind of understand it. But as you can see, simply, it's, it's beautiful fun. It doesn't really matter. You're, you're, everyone's having fun here. They're all smiling. They make, they're making jokes with each other, the other right. team. No, you can feel the energy yep. level because the game is fast. Yep, she should move all the way up. She knows that. And so, as you can see, what, as they keep scoring points, they keep rotating who they're going to serve it to. He should be up there. There you go. Good. That was a nice shot he did right at her feet. It's hard to get those ones at your feet. The half volley. Yeah. Okay. So Kim is now going to do her serve. That woman should return it deep and then be right up at that line, right up at the blue line on her side. That's what we want her to do. All right, they just got a point. Um, actually, that was their first point. I heard their score was 0-9 before, now it's 1-9. Yeah, they're not paying attention to us, so we'll wait for another program to go over scoring. Okay, yeah. So see how they move up together, that's nice. 
That's good. I like the way they moved up together. They also didn't move up too quickly. But you notice how she got caught in the middle of yes. the court at her feet? Yes, she did. Yep. Here, yep. Kim does another deep, should be deep serve. She should be moving up right now, not staying back there. It makes no sense to stay back there. Here's how I figure it. I earned my territory to get up to that no volley line, the right. kitchen line. I'm not going to stay back. Okay. The person in the orange, yeah, now you're on, two, two. on two occasions in the last five minutes, has gone right over and right on the line of this court, picked up a ball. It's a definite dangerous situation. Well, she should be, if it comes on this court, she should be yelling ball on court. We have, you know, or we if have the, a protocol. If the ball is very close to the line, this court should be saying left. Just like in tennis, if there's a dangerous situation, you call a left. So is that one of the rules well, in pickleball? Well, it's, it's not a rule, but I will tell you. So, so if, say, court two's ball comes in the middle and it's going in front of where someone is heading, walking, they need to yell, ball on court. Too many, too many words. I mean, that's just how we do in it. In a, in, you know, I'm, these courts I'm, are very close to I'm, each other. I'm just being constructive criticism. In tennis, they say like. Okay, that's it. it's over yeah. one word, let. Right. Yeah. Well, but but they, they're not she, gonna... should, she should not be allowed to walk right up and pick up a ball on the edge of her court. Absolutely right. Right. All right, so when you see a player like that, do you pull them aside and talk to them? I, I always, yep, and we always, we try to remind people about the safety. You know, safety about ball on court. Don't actually now the safety, of course, is not running backwards because we don't want people falling on, falling, hurting themselves. Okay. Well, I mean, you're familiar with the gestalt versus the hole. Okay. I am. So her focus is strictly on on the ball. She's not seeing the big picture. So Correct. She's like a. Too far back. Yeah. And, and the woman that says Calvin on it, she should be moving up to the line. But it, yeah, no, you know, it's just, no, it's just different levels. It's okay. Everybody's at a different level. And really, it's about comfort level. If people aren't comfortable up at the, the line, they might not head up that way. Any questions? OK, so as you can see, the game is fast and very energetic. But being fast is all to do is take a couple little steps here or there. So the vast majority of people that are looking for activity, socialization, whatever, you know, can, can play pickleball. Um, we'll have other sessions on webcam on pickleball, like going over the rules, so forth and so on. So out here you see mixed level. You've seen some higher level players and some lower level players yeah. mixed. But eventually, everybody will be rated and they'll, they'll play in their own groups, which well, makes at, it more competitive. At the league level, yes. The rec level is usually just open. Although I will right. say, um, at the rec level, um, it, like up at, above at the teen center, there are six courts. So we can spread it out by level. Okay. Um, and well, I, I was just going to say, you were t also talking about, can I play this game? Well, I know the young woman sitting on the bench had two knee replacements. That's Jean. She's an ambassador for USA Pickleball. Two knee replacements. She is loving this game. She's moving. She can play. I can play. I got two knee replacements. You can play. I can play. Uh, you don't have to be particularly fast. You, you know, you move your way up there. I played 10 years ago up uh, at uh, Sue's house. So, uh, now I'm familiar with, with pickleball. And a lot of it's like tennis. The terminology, a, a forehand, mm -hmm. a backhand, a half volley, a serve. Now the serve has to be done below the waist. 
In tennis, you throw the ball up and you hit it over your head. But in, in pickleball, you have to contact the ball below the waist. So there are some similarities and differences. Also in serving, tennis, you get two, two tries to get the ball in the proper zone. In pickleball, you only get one. But okay, you, have, but you have two servers. Okay, we're signing off. Uh, thanks for uh, watching us. Uh, you now know what pickleball is. Any questions? Sue Cannavale, what is your email. phone number, email, etc.? Best place to reach me is by, the easiest way for me is by email. And that's Dr. Sue, D R S U E 1 5. 15 at M as in monkey, S as in Sue, N as in Nancy.com. Thank you so much.